Hey guys, today I'm going to answer the question, is Unstable going to be valuable? Now, I have played during Unhinged, and I have bought boxes of Unhinged as well as Unglued. Very interesting to know, Unhinged has way more value if you take the expected value per pack than Unglued. And why is that the case? Well, it turns out that there is only one difference, and the difference is in the land. Now you might ask, how big of a difference is the land? Well, the unhinged ones are $12 for an island, about anywhere between $8 to $12 for the various different ones. The unglued are anywhere between $4 to $8. So a 50% difference. One of the main selling points of both sets were not just the regular land, but the ability to get foil lands. Th these sets are not tournament legal. They don't have a, you're not gonna see people really like serious magic players get into them because again, they cannot play them in standard. They cannot play them in modern. It's one of those scenarios where it's just not going to be something that people generally want to buy for the card power but should there be land should there be foil land it's quite interesting and it's interesting for this reason these sets were very valuable because the value per pack is incredibly consistent the value per pack is dependent on the land yes you can have something like a a foil glee max or a foil Mox Lotus, something like that, which would be very good and quite valuable later on, or Foil, Richard Garfield. But unlike the variants that we have with the Invocations, the variances that we have all the Masterpieces, even the Mythics, right? There's very high variance to that. If the most valuable set card in a set is a Mythic, you either hit it or you don't, but the, the probability of hitting the Mythic is very, very small. Here, when the most valuable card is the land, and the only difference is, did I get a foil land or did I not get a foil land, then the value is incredibly spread evenly, and everyone who buys a pack pretty much gets the same value. The question is, does Will in Time Unstable, will it actually be good enough? Like Unhinged and Unglued, I would say these are very good sets in terms of value, what they came out to be. Because although you don't see, you don't see a super valuable card in non-foil, you get a lot of fun cards and you're always guaranteed value. So as it goes, like $8 for a mountain is pretty good. As it goes, the only big variance factor is, is your land a foil? And if the answer is yes, you're looking at a pretty nice multiplier, right? Let's go ahead and let's go to the Zendikar and the Amakat and the battle for Zendikar. And let's talk about their lands. And I expected them to impact the price of impact negatively. The price of unglued and unhinged because I expected what would have happened was, which is not correct, again, this is what I expected, but this is not what happened. The more full art lands there are, the less valuable these would become, but it's actually the reverse. What I didn't expect to happen was the lands all have Nicol Bolas's horns. So to many, they're not considered the best version of the land or not even close. They would much rather have the John Avons which makes a lot of sense because I know Nicol Boles, uh, we like his horns. I know that Battle for Zendikar, it's, it's, we have the Adrazi and all of this kind of interesting stuff. But sometimes, when, especially with land cards, you just want lands to be lands. You just want to say, hey, John, Avon, I'm going to tell you, just print something beautiful. These cards are absolutely stunning because I think the artists are A, I mean, yes, they do have the same artist sometimes, but I think the artists are, uh, they put more into it. I, I don't want to say that like lightly, but they just look better, right? John Avon sells these 
so often at his store for uh, big posters. It's not something that people. It's something that people want as a artwork, right? And as when you compare it to Battle for Zendikar, original Zendikar, I mean, those were really nice. I think original Zendikar took the hardest hit because that was the least premium land. I think Unstable will have a very high premium land with uh, great artists. Now you might ask, what happened with Unglued? Unglued looks more like the Amakant lands in my opinion. They don't. They have the border, which is not. Compl it's interesting. Unglued at one time was more expensive than Unhinged because Unglued came out much earlier than Unhinged. And for the most part, when you have two of the similar objects, the older one will be more expensive. And that was what was happening. The unglued was considered at one time the more valuable of the two. But it turned out unhinged just uh, exploded. You know, eight to twelve dollars is very good when you pay me back then. Booster packs were cheaper. I don't. I forget how much, but they were not four dollars back then. It's still not four dollars today if you buy from a local game store. And so let's say if you buy a bundle. Also, in the next video, I'm gonna. I don't know when I'm gonna upload that video, but then one of the next videos I'm going to make is about Walmart. Walmart is fire selling Hour of Devastation bundles for twenty seven dollars. Like it's astounding because you can actually price match. That means very very bad things for stores. Uh, I I don't know how else to say it, but uh, if. Walmart is selling a bundle for $27 and your store is selling it for $44 or $40 or even $35. Why would anyone buy from the store? Um, because I think the price gap is a little too much even for me. I will buy from the store if it costs a few extra dollars. That's fine. But not if Walmart's selling for $27 and the store is selling for $37 and it's a $10 difference and you're just like, mm, no. All right. Anyway, back to the why unstable is going to be good consistency, right? If unstable has a land, in all indications is that they will put the best artists to make the best lands. It will be valuable as a set. Uh, you will always have the potential. It might take some time, but I would much rather have a stack of unhinged lands and unglued lands than sit on a box. These things are very easy to trade out of. These things are very liquid. They're very beautiful. So, like, I, my philosophy of collection collecting has always been: if the if I own a hundred copies of this card and it doesn't go up in price, and let's say it tanks a ton in price, then what will happen? Right? Will I still enjoy this card? Will I still like this card? If the answer is yes, then I don't care. I'll buy. It. I'll buy stacks of it. But if the answer is no, then I have to flip it and try to get out the card, which is currently everyone I know who has a large collection is in fire sale mode. And that is interesting because they're no longer playing Magic the Gathering. They're playing like Star, Star Wars, Fighters, Fighter something. They're playing like uh, Munchkins. They moved on to games that I think are more adult games. Like not to say Magic is not an adult game, but getting older right and my friends want to play the settler settlers of Catan, which i always like but i like magic better they want to play these board games where everyone has the same possibility to win they want to play poker and uh and it it doesn't make sense to them that someone because they could pay more money so the average friend i have does not understand why someone would have to pay twelve hundred dollars for the optimized legacy deck uh, not even twelve. What is it? Four underground seas is two thousand. Let's call it, let's call it four thousand dollars for a good legacy deck, and then someone's going to play like a bad legacy deck for like a hundred, a budget one. They don't get it. They think everyone should have the same opportunity, which in every single board game is pretty much true, right? Even the Magic Duels or the Planeswalker board game, you have the same opportunity. I played it once. It was, I could see why they uh, had to heavily discount it and still not selling. Uh, it wasn't a bad board game. It just wasn't very good. 
And with some of the board games, they're so creative. Like I was playing one with the firefighters and you had to put out these fires. It was a lot of fun. I was playing one where like you had to figure out who the assassin is. And it's, you know, most friends are not going to understand the concept of, um, hey, we need to spend money to make our decks better. They just want to play a board game where everyone has equal opportunity to win. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.